Every few months, a friend of mine on Facebook will post a picture kind of like this. It's supposed to be the Golden Girls when they were young. B. Arthur, Rue McClanahan, uh, Betty White, and Estelle Getty. Problem is, two of these ladies were not Golden Girls. I'll tell you more just after this. Hi, I'm Jeff and welcome to A Million Movies. So, I love movies and hopefully if you found this channel, you love movies too. What I want to do here is really talk about some of the great movies that are out there. Uh, current movies somewhat, but really talk about some of those older movies. And the reason I started thinking about this was because in my office, I've got a lot of people who have not seen as many older movies as I have. And so if someone's going golfing, for example, I'm likely going to make a Caddyshack reference or some kind of joke or pull a quote out for them. And when I do it, I sometimes get this little blank stare. Now, a great demonstration of this was on the Fine Brothers about a week, week and a half ago when they took 80s movies posters and they showed them to people and tried to get them to guess what the poster was. So take a look. Here's a sample. Do you know this movie? Uh, it's golf. Oh my god, why is there a beaver on the roof? Looks like we got some like businessmen and then we got like some fishermen in the back. Golfing? So, and there's a groundhog. Unless it's Happy Gilmore, is it? The 80s are a long time ago. That was way before I was born. Now, it's not their fault that they didn't know the movie posters. No one had probably ever asked them to watch it with them. So, my goal is to say, here's a great movie. Here's a great scene. Here's a great actor or actress. Here's a great director. Whatever it could be and encourage you to go find that movie and watch it. Really appreciate sort of the history of filmmaking uh, and how it has a great impact on what you're seeing today. Getting back to what I started this video with, with the Golden Girls, uh, what I'm gonna do is a little demonstration of this. So this is what I have seen. I've seen these pictures on Facebook before. Now, to be fair, this is B. Arthur. So that's B. Arthur right there, and that is Rue McClanahan. Both those ladies were actually Golden Girls, and this is what they looked like when they were younger than when they were on the TV show. But I've saw this one recently, and someone said that was Betty White, and that this was a young Estelle Getty. And those two threw me off a little bit, because I know that that's not Betty White, and I definitely know that that's not Estelle Getty. So what I'm going to do today is tell you about those two ladies, and what was special about them, uh, and how they had an impact on the movies. So the lady who was supposed to be Betty White, her real name is actually Betty, but it's Betty Brosmer. Uh, and Betty Brosmer got married to a man named Joe Wider and she spent most of her life uh, as, as Betty Wider. Betty was a fitness model. She was a model who really got into fitness fairly young uh, and she had a nickname called the Girl with the Impossible Waist. She was a 38, 18, 36 and was called the perfect hourglass figure. Now, Betty was considered by many to be the very first supermodel. Uh, she's been on the cover of over 300 magazines, extremely popular in the 50s. Now, Betty never appeared in any movies that I know of as an actress, but Betty Brosmer, uh, her pictures have appeared in movies. Her posters as a fitness model actually appear in Pumping Iron, the, uh, the, the uh, documentary made about bodybuilders that featured Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno. Earlier than, than that, if you go back and watch the classic, The Dirty Dozen, uh, in the barrack scenes where Lee Marvin is training uh, his, his team, all along the walls are pictures of Betty Brosmer. Now those pictures were actually taken in the 50s, and The Dirty Dozen is set during World War II, so it's a little bit of an anachronism, uh, but, but Betty's in the movie, so we'll give her credit. The other lady, this lady right here that people thought and, and think people think is Estelle Getty. The problem is, it's not Estelle Getty. It's one of my favorite actresses of all time. And if you don't know who she is, I'm I'm super excited to tell you about her. Uh, her name is Myrna Loy, and Myrna Loy was fantastic. She was considered the queen of Hollywood in the late 30s. Clark Gable was the king. Myrna Loy was the queen. I want to tell you a little bit about her from her very beginning in this episode. So Myrna Loy was born in 1905. Uh, she moved to California. She was a dancer. She went to Venice High School in Los Angeles. And 
One of the really interesting things about her that I've, I've always been sort of fascinated by was there's lots of statues of people after they become famous, but Myrna Loy was a model and she had a statue made of her before she was famous. So when she was in high school, she modeled for uh, a statue that stood in front of Venice High School for decades. In fact, her statue has actually been in a movie, a movie you've probably seen. If you've ever seen the movie Grease, the opening scenes are shot at Venice High School in Los Angeles. So her statue's in front of Venice High School where she went to school. So as the uh, T-Birds are coming to school in the morning at the beginning of the movie, you can see them walk around and that white statue there, that's Myrna Loy before she was famous. After high school, Myrna Loy uh, wanted to work in Hollywood, but she wanted to be a dancer. She actually was an extra, uh, along with Clark Gable and Joan Crawford, in the 1925 silent epic of Ben-Hur. So if you look at this crowd shot, uh, somewhere in there is Myrna Loy, Clark Gable, and Joan Crawford. She got a couple of parts in, as a dancer in movies, uh, and one movie in particular was so famous it was, uh, even a bit part was a big deal. Uh, she played a chorus girl in A Jazz Singer. In one backstage scene, as Al Jolson's sort of uh, going crazy for one of the other dance girls, you'll see Myrna Loy standing there talking to another of the dancers. And just an early shot of this future star. But what really set Myrna Loy off as a star is a series of movies called The Thin Man, which are based on novels by Dashiell Hammett. So it's a, a husband and wife detective team, uh, Nick and Nora Charles, uh, and she was paired up with William Powell. I want to show you a little clip here of the opening, one of the opening scenes of the first Thin Man movie. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing Nora enter the restaurant uh, with their dog Asta, looking for her husband Nick. You Women and children first, boys. Say, so what is the score, anyway? Oh, so it's you he was after. Hello, sugar. He's dragged me into every gin mill on the block. Yeah, I had him out this morning. Oh, I thought so. Oh, uh, uh this is Tommy, uh, my wife. How are you? Tommy? How do you do? Tommy, I don't usually look like this. I've been Christmas shopping. Madam, I'm afraid we shall take the dog out. Oh, it's, it's all right, Joe. It's all right. It's my dog. And, uh, uh my wife. Well, you might have mentioned me first on the billing. The dogs. Well. So what you see with that with that scene in The Thin Man, with the first scene with Nora in it, um, is you see something really different than what you might have seen in other movies from this time, from 1934. Uh, you're seeing a great sort of banner between the husband and wife, with Nora sort of getting the joke on Nick at the end there. Uh, she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nick and with the other men in the movie, like hardly any other female characters had that time. She was very strong, very witty, uh, very quick, and just made that movie so fantastic. In addition to the Thin Man series of movies, there are a couple other movies that Myrna Loy is really famous for. Uh, she was in Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House with yeah, Cary Grant. Fantastic scene in that where she's picking out paint colors or describing paint colors to her painter. We'll look at that one in a future episode. Um, she was also in Cheaper by the Dozen. And then she did a movie called uh, The Best Years of Our Lives, which came out shortly after World War II ended and focused on how the families and soldiers returning from World War II adjusted to life back home. All right, so let me wrap this up by getting back to the Golden Girls. Um, I don't want to skip them because I am a big fan of all four of those actresses. B. Arthur, if you haven't seen her in MAME with Lucille Ball, or she has a great little part in History of the World Part 1, the Mel Brooks movie. Estelle Getty did a lot of television, uh, but she was she was great in Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Uh, so if you ever get a chance to see that one, that's a great Estelle Getty movie. Rue McClanahan, again, fantastic television actress. Uh, for movies, I would probably look at a role that you probably won't even recognize her if you see her. If you watch Starship Troopers, uh, you'll see Rue McClanahan um, as one of the teachers in that movie. And then Betty White, of course, a national treasure, uh, just one of the greatest people in the world. Um, movies that she's been in recently, by the last 10 years, she was in The Proposal with Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock, had a great scene stealing role. If you get a chance, that's another good movie to watch. So today we talked about several movies. Uh, here's the ones that I can remember that we talked about. We started off by talking about Betty Brosmer and The Dirty Dozen with her photos on the wall. 
from Myrna Loy, uh, we started with Grease. We talked about Ben Hur, the 1925 version, the jazz singer, the thin man. Uh, we also mentioned Mr. Blanding's Bills' Dream House and the best years of our lives. Then we went to the Golden Girls and we talked about uh, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot with Estelle Getty, Starship Troopers with Rue McClanahan, The Proposal with Betty White, and then we mentioned two movies that featured B. Arthur, Mame, and History of the World Part 1. All right, so that's 12 movies, an even dozen. That brings our total for today down to, if I do my math right, 999,988. We got a long way to go, but hopefully we'll get through it and um, we'll see those numbers drop. Um, and then finally, just one last call out. Uh, this is a new vlog. I'd love to get your comments below. Tell me what movies you think we should be talking on about on this channel. Uh, give me some suggestions, give me feedback, correct me if you think I've done something wrong. Uh, and definitely, if you can, help me out. Uh, click that little subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. There's nothing's gonna happen. I don't send emails out. Um, but uh, it would really help just sort of building a little fan base knowing that someone's actually watching these. All right, so until next time, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching A Million Movies.